Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the birth of our Lord. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And a special Christmas greeting to you all. We prepare to celebrate this Christmas Eucharist, remembering that we are redeemed sinners. And so we have the courage to ask God for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, you my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, bless Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings, who publishes peace, who brings good tidings of good, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All, all the, the ends, ends of, of the earth, earth have, have seen, seen the salvation of our, of our God. God. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. All, All the ends of the earth have, have seen, seen the salvation, salvation of our God. God. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. 
all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing out your praise. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Raise a shout before the King, the Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In many and various ways, God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the ages. He reflects the glory of God and bears the very stamp of his nature, upholding the universe by his word of power. When he has made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels, as the name he has obtained is more excellent than theirs. For to what angel did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says that all God's angels worship him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. A hallowed day has shone upon us. Come, O nations, and adore the Lord, for today a great light has come down to earth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world knew him not. He came to his own people, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten Son from the Father. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but the one thing that irritates me is when, at this great and glorious time, people start grumbling. And the particular grumble that gets me, because I think it's basically mistaken, is this grumble that some people make, particularly religious people who say that this has become too materialist. Nonsense. This feast is the festival of matter itself. Now you're shocked. <laughs> Have you ever thought what it would be like to celebrate Christmas without all the things we are used to? 
communities gathering together, families meeting up, sometimes the only time in the year, celebrations, some nice drinks, Christmas pudding, all those great things. I'd miss them. And the English people missed them in the 17th century when the Puritans decided to abolish Christmas. They didn't last, thank God. Why do I say then that we should celebrate? Why should we, I say that it's a feast celebrating matter itself? Well, let's have a look at this gospel. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Well, I take it back further. God created matter. God created the universe, the whole universe that we are part of, that we are an integral part of, was created by God. We call it the Big Bang in science. We call it creation in Genesis. It's the same thing, different terminologies. The whole universe, which is matter, the matter we see around us, the spaces between the stars, which include large areas of matter. It's called dark matter. We don't know what it is yet. Matter is everywhere. Creation is integral to matter. I love the quote of the great mystic, Teilhard de Chardin, who said that the universe is, quote, the divine milieu charged with creative power as the ocean stirred by the spirit, as the clay molded and infused with life by the incarnate word. Teilhard, I think that matter is good. And what more material can you get than the birth of a child? Unless you think a birth deserves and is ghostly, isn't. I'm sure many of you know that from experience. Matter is the way in which we encounter God. In the trees we see, in the stars at night, in each other in the birth of an obscure little baby on the edge of the Roman Empire in a little one-horse town so unimportant that nothing was recorded of his birth. So much so that today, in fact, is his official birthday. We don't know his actual birthday. Matter is the way in which we encounter God. But matter isn't just matter in itself. Matter is suffused with God. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Think of light. Light is energy. Matter is energy. We are light and energy energy, all of us. When we celebrate the birth of Christ, we celebrate something tremendously important. Christ enters into our human material world. He's been with us from the beginning. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. But he enters into our world why? Now, the usual argument is to save us from our sins. And, yeah, that's true. But I think we can go one step further. The love and the energy of the Trinity that creates the world and the universe could not be contained to being just observers. Even if we weren't sinners, and we certainly are, God would have had to find out what it's like on ground with God's creatures. That is why Jesus is born. 
to enter into our human nature, our material nature. What a privilege. What a joy. That's why I say, this is a feast that celebrates matter. I also would add that that doesn't give us a license to overindulge. Be careful if you wake up on Boxing Day not remembering it is Boxing Day. Much better, think about that material experience, connectedness with each other, families, sharing of gifts, hey, if you're like me, a nice drop of wine, Christmas pudding, Christmas cake. There's nothing wrong with that. Because it's part of who we are. And God celebrates with us. God celebrates our material being. And God celebrates with us in the mystery that leads to our redemption. So, let's not overindulge. And let's also remember that this year, that many people may not be able to make a wild splash of things and shouldn't, given the risks of our current state of coronavirus and also the fact that many people are cash-strapped. But it's not the money that's part of it. It's the connectedness. It is the fact that we are actually connecting to each other in remembering that we share the matter of a Christmas celebration together. And we share the matter that is each other, part of the matter that is the great universe around us. Let's also not forget that we have indeed been visited. We have indeed been part of God's encounter with us in our very nature. Truly, we have beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten Son from the Father. Amen. So then let us together, on this day where we celebrate the birth of Christ, profess our faith in Christ, in the child of Bethlehem. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, in him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, come again, again in glory to judge, judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, Lord, the giver of life, life who, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one the holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. We celebrate Christ among us. And as we join with him, we ask him for all our needs. As we celebrate once again, God made human in Jesus Christ, we pray for all people, 
that in this holy season they may be preserved in justice, renewed in hope, and strengthened in faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we celebrate the eternal God entering time, we pray that our time may be one in which hostilities cease, conflicts are resolved peacefully, and leaders and people of goodwill will strive towards a new world worthy of the Christ child and of all children. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we celebrate once again God made human in Jesus Christ, we pray that we may learn from this divine celebration of the material world to prize and protect all of God-filled creation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bring before you, Lord, all who are sick at this time, people separated from loved ones through quarantine or isolation, as well as all who care for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pause to bring before the Lord our own needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Eternal God, who entered our time in the name and person of Jesus of Nazareth, we bring before you these prayers we make this Christmas day. We ask you to hear them and answer them according to your will. We make all these prayers in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And this morning, the water and the bread, where we come to share in the divinity of him who shared in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And friends pray. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's team, for our good and good of all us, Holy Church. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the past. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, Woody, our Archbishop, Duncan, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Lord himself taught us, so let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so may he be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We don't normally have parish announcements, but I think you'll allow us to, to make an exception today. First and foremost, I'd like to sort of Thank everyone who has joined us from wherever you are, whether you've been with us over the last few months, or whether this is the first time you've tuned in to this Mass. We wish you all a very, very blessed Christmas. I say this on behalf of the Jesuit Institute, Father Russell Pollitt, the Director, and all members of the Institute, including those special folks who do the recordings of these masses and those who share in the responses. 
and do the readings. All of you, a very blessed Christmas. And because it's Christmas, we get a little present from Holy Mother Church, which is a special blessing. There's a response to it. I'm sure you'll get it. So, bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son, has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his son saving birth be an announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is complete. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.